Hallo Leute, ich bin Wissam, ich bin 15 Jahre alt, ich bin aus Tunesien und ich bin ein Student, ich gehe noch zur Schule und ich habe einen Hund namens Bobby und ich liebe meinen Hund über alles. Und ihr seht, Deutsch für euch. Hi there! This is just a part of a series that I'm doing on prefixes. To fully understand what's going on here, I recommend you watch the introduction on prefixes I did a while back, in which I explained when prefixes get separated from the base verb and when they don't, plus the little how-to I did on this whole series as to how to use these videos and what exactly I'm even trying to do with them. As a short reminder, you can find a list of the verbs that I will be combining with the individual prefixes in the description of all of these videos. Also, be aware that in the video I will not be combining every prefix with every one of those verbs, just in the interest of time. For more information on how to get the full list, though, stay tuned until the end of the video. And that's it for the intro. Have fun with today's prefixes. I have some good news and bad news, guys. Good news first. This is our last episode on trennbare, so separable prefixes, which means that next episode we will start with unseparable ones, inseparable ones. I'm still not sure, untrennbare. The bad news is that those are, for the most part, a lot harder to explain, so a lot of fun for all of us. But for now, let's stick with the easier ones. First off, today we have weg, which is a really easy one because weg on its own means away, and that's also what the prefix means in a vast majority of cases. There are some exceptions, of course, where it's a more metaphorical, vague connection to that meaning, again, as always, but it's that's really a rare occurrence with this prefix, so yay! It often gets combined with von, because weg von means away from. Weg sein, to be away. Etwas weggeben, to give something away. Weggehen, to go away, etwas von jemandem wegmachen. Now this means to take something off, to take something away, but not in the sense of like taking something from somebody, but for example, you might have a bug on your shirt and you could then say, mach es weg, so that somebody could like take it off your shirt. That's wegmachen. Again, as with most of the time when we have machen in when involved, it's very colloquial and it's it's something usually associated with child speech. Etwas weglassen, to omit something. Diesen Vorfall habe ich weggelassen. I omitted that incident. Wegkommen oder von etwas wegkommen, to get away, to get away from something. Etwas weglegen means to lay something away, literally. Uh, and that usually means that you're putting it into reserve or you're putting it into hiding place. So to put something away, generally. Wegsehen oder von etwas wegsehen. To look away or to look away from something. Von etwas wegbleiben. To stay away, to stay away from something. Etwas weg erklären. This is not on the usual list, but I wanted to kind of put it in there because I like the imagery. To explain something away. To kind of rationalize something away. Etwas weg erklären. Weg hören. To hear away, meaning you're not listening to something in intentionally. La, 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 la. Etwas wegnehmen. To take something away. Jemandem etwas wegnehmen. To take something away from somebody. So not... Etwas von jemandem wegnehmen, sondern jemandem etwas wegnehmen. Alright? Think of the cases. They're useful. Zu. Zu either means closed, so something being closed, and in that sense then is the antonym of auf, or it means something is increasing or being added onto something, in which case it then is the antonym of up. At least, of course, when up is used in the sense of a decrease. So, zu sein, to be closed. This is applicable to anything that can be closed, really. Zu haben, to be closed. Now, the differentiation between zu sein and zu haben is kind of... Uh, because zu sein is a state and zu haben is kind of a, a variable thing. Basically, it boils down to zu haben is something that really only stores can do. 
So wir haben zu means we are closed as opposed to the just neutral this is closed. So that's kind of the only way that zu haben gets used. Zusagen or jemandem zusagen means to give an affirmative answer uh, to kind of promise to be there. So it's usually to a party or to some sort of other social function. If you say ich sage zu, that means I'm coming, basically. And then there is jemandem etwas zu sagen, which means to promise something to somebody. So you kind of give them a right to whatever it is you're zu sagen them. So this is something that could, for example, be found in the context of a will. Etwas zugeben, to admit something. Etwas dazu geben means to add something to something. Gets used a lot in recipes, specifically in baking recipes. Und dann die Eier dazu geben, and then add the eggs. Zugehen, to close, to close by itself, so this is usually only for things. The door, as the usual example comes to mind. So this is a very, it's not directly passive, because we kind of perceive the thing that is closing on its own as the active party here, but it's something that nobody is involved in as in doing an action. That would be zu machen, which means to close Again, with the very, very vague context that machen usually is, it's a very colloquial word. Once again, it just means you're closing something as in actively as an action. So the door can either zugehen, because I don't know, the wind is coming through and it's just zugehen on its own, or I could zumachen the door. Etwas zulassen, to leave something in its closed state, or etwas zulassen, to let something happen, to allow something to happen. Das werde ich nicht zulassen, I won't allow that. Jemandem zustehen, to be deserved by somebody. Now this is kind of hard because you don't really have this verb in English because it's one of those verbs that makes an active verb out of a passive state. So. Jemandem zustehen means that somebody is entitled to the thing that zustehen somebody, okay? So let's say somebody zu sagen or zu sprechen you something in a will. So they promise that you will get it. From that point on, this thing then zustehen you. So then when your great aunt, I don't know what her name is, Henny, Henny's will is being read and somebody else is suddenly getting the money that she said you would get, you could say, dieses Geld steht mir zu. I'm entitled to that money. Zu sehen. To watch, to look at something, to watch as something happens. Now, I explained hinsehen in a similar manner. The difference here is that hinsehen implies the directional looking. So when I'm zu sehen, the focus is on, I'm, I'm looking at this specifically, I'm watching this unfold, while Hinsehen does the same thing, yes, but also um, emphasizes that I'm for, for that, I'm looking at something directional. So the focus is, is slightly different. They're interchangeable, I'd say, 99% of the time. But don't quote me on that, I did not actually make a study for this. Etwas zuhalten, to keep something shut or to hold it shut, to make sure it stays shut. So I don't know. Suddenly your your laundry basket comes alive and you have to hold it shut. That's zuhalten. And then for some reason, der Zuhälter means pimp. Zuhören, same as with zusehen, means to listen to something intently, specifically. And then we have zunehmen, which is the antonym of abnehmen. So it means to gain weight or to increase. And then our last one of the separable verbs is zurück. And it's another one, just like weg, that's pretty awesome in the way that it usually means what it means. Zurück means back, and that's also usually what it means when it's a prefix. There are a few that cannot be translated directly using the word back in English, but they're still very, very closely connected to it semantically. So, jemanden oder etwas zurück haben, to have somebody or something back. Jemanden oder etwas zurückgeben, to give somebody or something back. Zurückgehen, to go back. Zurücklassen, to leave behind. 
Now here I could not have used back, so that's one of the ones you have to watch out for in that sense, so be warned. But it's really not that hard. Zurücklassen, to leave behind. Somebody or something. Jemanden oder etwas zurücklassen. Zurückkommen, to come back. Zu jemandem zurückkommen, to come back to somebody. Zurückbleiben, to stay back or to stay away. So literally the shout, stay away, stay back, can be translated to bleib zurück. Now then we also have the word zurückgeblieben, which literally means retarded, but it doesn't really have the same connotation as in English because zurückgeblieben does not have the history of being used for mentally handicapped people. So while saying bist du zurückgeblieben is an insult and does mean are you retarded, does not carry the same offensiveness as in English. Of course, it is, you know, it's still not a nice thing to say. But to be the, the, at the same level of, um, of offensiveness, in German, you would actually have to say bist du behindert, because behindert is the, is, is the term that could be used, but should not anymore be used for mentally handicapped or handicapped people in general. So zurückgeblieben does mean retarded, isn't quite as offensive as retarded, but of course it's still an insult, so. Zurückfinden, to find one's way back. Sich zurückhalten, to hold back. Careful with this one. Sich zurückhalten always has to be reflexive in German. So not just zurückhalten, you can jemanden zurückhalten, which would then be to stop somebody, to hold somebody else back. But when you're holding yourself back, then you're sich zurückhalten. Zurückhören is not a word that exists in German. To say, to hear back from somebody, you would have to say von jemandem hören oder noch einmal von jemandem hören. Etwas zurücknehmen means to take something back, both literally taking something or uh, metaphorically. So you said something you shouldn't have said, you can take it back. Zurücknehmen works the same in German. And finally, also literally translatable, zurückfallen, to fall back. And that's it for today and for the separable prefixes already. Wow! Now, if you want to get a copy of that list I mentioned in the intro of all of the verbs that are combined with these prefixes with all of the prefixes that I combine them with, if possible, as well as all of those grammar scripts that I've published so far, you can support me on Patreon, which is always linked in the description as well as on the screen right now. And you can pledge any amount you want from as little as $1 to anything, if you can afford that. And once you've supported me for a full month, I will add you to the Dropbox folder where all of those files are. Yay! Your random word of the week is... I don't know, man, I'm running out of words. Die Einfallslosigkeit. Um, the thing I have right now. Absence of ideas. I'll look up if there's a better word for it. If there is, you'll see it on screen right now. If not, that's what it is. It, when you don't have a clue what you should do or say. Die Einfallslosigkeit. Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss.